best support player the game has ever seen. Terry Lamb left the Magpies and became one of the Bulldogs' favourite sons. A key member of the 1980s Dogs of War, his 350 NRL games was only recently surpassed by Darren Lockyer. Renowned for his toughness, the man affectionately known as Barr, took out the Dallium 5 8 of the year seven times and these days continues his close involvement with the Canterbury Club. Tonight, Terry Lamb joins us one on one. Terry, good to see you. Thanks for coming in. You're actually the second Chester Hill Hornet we've had sit in that seat in two weeks, Corey Payne. Last week, when you drive past your old junior ground, how do you feel to see the complex named after you? Well, it was originally called, or is still called Abbott Park, and then it was Banfield Oval, top and bottom, and the whole thing's called Terry Lane Complex. I was proud at the, at the time they did it, um, and I do drive past it almost every single day going to work. Just so that you can. You go well out of your way to make sure you take this. <laughs> it's true Chester Hill. <laughs> you were actually a Canterbury junior, but you signed your first professional contract with the Magpies in 1980. Why the Western Suburbs? Um, Kenny Jennels was uh, a Jersey fleet coach at the time. We won the premiership in 79. Um, Kenny won over coach the under-23s at the time, and uh, he asked me to go over. They looked at me and I had a couple of trials with them. Went back to Canterbury, see if they would offer me a contract, and West offered me 5000 bucks to uh, sign for the club. We hit the ground running, and you scored a double your first game there, and it was only a year later that you actually made your State of Origin debut, albeit after a very late call-up. So what happened? It was a call-up of the, the day, day of the game. I think we played Tuesday in the old days, and um, got a phone call on the Monday afternoon. You've got to be at the airport at this time and that time, and um, went to the... The, uh, the airport, fly up there, sitting next to Peter Peters, I think, who was working for 2GB, maybe at the time. And um, he, I said, he said, where are you staying? I said, I wouldn't have a clue, mate. <laughs> said, well, well, how do you get into the hotel? I said, I don't know where we're staying. <laughs> so he made a phone call, we got to the airport, found out where we're staying. He was staying at the same place and uh, he gave me a lift and walked into this room and Mick Cronin was there, Steve Rogers was there. Um, and I met the boys on the day about 12 o'clock in the afternoon and watched the video and went down to sleep. And I had no idea about night football and I think we got smashed that day too. I think I threw an intercept to uh, someone. They didn't get smashed. Oh, I was your husband and we hadn't done no. until no. a couple of hours before kickoff. Yeah. At least. yeah. Well, we did, we did and I'll tell you what, uh, Pete, um, Price was in the game yeah. and he looked after me unbelievable. I, I reckon Price is a champion. Um, after the game had Vodkas and orange, like I used to used to do, and um, we sat and spoke about different things about about the game of football. And I was only, I think, eighteen years old. Nineteen eighty three was your last year at Western Suburbs. It was a bad year for the club, but you actually took out the Dalian Player of the Year award. Is it true that the winnings from that award was actually more than your club contract at the time? Yeah, you remember the old days? You get paid um, win, win, win and loss. Yeah. I think it was three hundred to win. Um, hundred dollars loss, and yeah, we didn't win too many games. Um, I think I got about seven and a half thousand um, for the Dally M, and got paid six thousand dollars or something like that. So it was a little bonus for me. <laughs> well, you rectified that. You went to the, the Bulldogs uh, the following season, and uh, you won a, a premiership. The first of three for you. You missed eighty five through through injury. Through injury, yeah. But out of the ones that you played, is there a standout? Uh, for me. Well, there's two. 84, I hadn't won a premiership in a great game before. Um, I loved it. I loved going back to Belmore Oval. The supporters were there. Uh, we, were the, we were the kings of, of the next 12 months. But the 95 stands out for me when I was captain. Yeah. Spaced him in my last year. Bit of a, a split in the in the ranks at the club with Super League and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, we got together and... I think we got beat by New Zealand by 40 points, and then after that game, we won every game, oh, six or seven in a row, and uh, uh, we, we are very close to that team, and we're still close to a lot of the players who played in grand finals. All right, well, the one that you missed out, and you can come clean, because uh, this is a show to do it, did you deliberately take out Ellery Hanley in the 88 this either? Um, no. If you look at, have you got the footage? Because <laughs> I've never seen it. I've seen it never once. seen it. Well, where it is. Oh, gee, yeah. Wow. <laughs> you have never seen that before? I'd seen it once before, but I didn't think it was that bad. Um, 
Andrew Farrell, <laughs> the story was told, Andrew Farrell tapped him in the round the legs, and as he was falling to the ground, I've come over the top and hit him with my right arm. That's what I, that's what people told me. Barry Nelson, our president at the time, told me that. And I believed for 25 years until I, I met El Rio after 25 years. <laughs> and uh, you've just seen I, I jumped and got him with my left arm. So uh, it looks like I've got him on purpose, but there was no malice in it. Um, there was no setup. We didn't think Ellie was any better than player than anybody else. But it happened on, on the ground, and I, I apologised to him after 25 years. Uh, he said, mate, it happened on the field, let it go. Yeah. So I was very, very pleased with that. Those three titles that you won were under three different coaches. Uh, you know, Phil Gould, Chris Anderson and Warren Ryan. Yep. How did they vary, those coaches? Um, Chris was from Canterbury. He knew what we were about. He knew our culture and all that kind of stuff. And he, he brought us as a team together. Gus is a very smart person that can get in people's minds and he'll tell you you can run through that brick wall like Brandon Lee did when he came with us in 88. And Warren, he brought, he brought the game to us again. He made us um, step off our left, step off our right, start parts on the ball, go back to junior football. So they're completely different footballs and completely different uh, men. Mm, the real education. Oh, Absolutely, oh, yeah. Three of them. Yeah, the only bloke that I can recall, a player, that made himself unavailable for two kangaroo tours. Let's start w with 1982. You were selected, yeah. but you didn't go. Why not? Well, I don't know if I was selected. Uh, one of the selectors came up to me when I, at Lickham Oval and said, if you have a couple of good good, more good games, you might get, get picked on the kangaroo tour. And I said, mate, when is it? And I had no idea. Mm. He said, um... We leave in the end of September or something like that, October. And I said, mate, I'm getting married in October. So I knocked that one back to get married, and I'm glad I did. Had four lovely children, a beautiful wife. And um, 1990. 1990, yeah. Bozo come up to me and said, uh, how about would you like to go on a tour again? I'm at the end of my career, and um, I didn't think I'd... And if I went over, I probably would have played hooker, because I think uh, Jeff Turvey played a bit of hooker then, and and playing with uh, Johnsy and all that. So um, I don't know if I would have made the team. I was more concentrated on Canterbury at the time and um, my longevity in football. If I went over, maybe I wouldn't have played as many games. Well, in between, you created history. In 1986 on the Canterbury Tour, you played every game, all 20 of them. Did the coach, Don Ferno, ever sort of have a chat to you about that possibility happening? N not at the start, no. Um, but I knew I could play a num number of positions coming off the bench and there was only two reserves. Um, but it came to the last game in France, as you know, Pete, you were there. Um, I was picked with the stars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of them. <laughs> I can't grow here, you can see that. <laughs> um, come to the last game in France and the team was picked out and my name wasn't mentioned in the team. And I played every other game, nine and games, and... I don't know what happened. Ciro's game was, was called out, his name, and um, he pulled out with a boil or something like that. I, you know, I don't think Ciro would have pulled out with a boil no. going into a test match, right? Okay. So I think he, I think you players got together. I really don't know. And um, asked Donny, could I, I play in that game? And so, so be it, and I made history. As I say, 20 games on that tour. How, do you remember how many games you would have played in that season? No idea, mate. Um, 86... I don't think I missed too many games for Canterbury. Um, yeah, over 50. Was it 50? Over 50? Yeah. State, uh, city, country? Yeah. State of origin? Yeah. No, oh, you're all right. I, um, I drank a lot, as you know, on the tour, Pete. At the end of the 80s, you actually were the leading try scorer through the whole decade, all of that decade. Okay. And a lot of that's based on your uncanny ability to, to support. When did that become such a vital, integral part of your game? I think it was more about the players around me, Pete. Um, I actually learned what they actually did. Left foot, right foot step. Someone, Mitch Newton, gets a ball around the corner. Um, Andrew Farrell tries to beat a bloke on the outside and palm off. I tried to learn what they could do and their strengths. So I really just gave them the ball and they did it all and I just backed up in the middle. So. Um, the, if the ball's on the either side, the ball's always going to come back to the middle of the field. So um, I got a head start on them because I passed back. I used to pass backwards. So 
um, I was in front of the ball at the time. So it, it wasn't hard. And I think you know, Pete, if you play with good players, you become a better player yourself and a better person. Yeah. So well, I'm lucky I've played with some very good players. Oh, 1992, we can't let this go. Um, for our younger viewers especially, the field goal yeah. against Newcastle. Just take us through it one more time. Well, it's easy. Canterbury Road end. Newcastle score a try. 10 all. I talking to the players. This is what we do the next sets of six when we get the ball back. Uh, we'll take the ball downfield, we'll get into position and we'll go shot at field goal. But this is probably eight minutes towards the end of the end of the the game and Jeff Schuster kicks it from the sideline and straight over the post. I didn't even see him kick it. 12-10. 12-10. I kick a field goal probably in four or five minutes. Turn around to Mitch Newton. No shake, he said we need a lot of point. <laughs> so uh, thanks. <laughs> but there was plenty of time after that for us still to win the game. Oh, so it was a planned move. Oh, it was. <laughs> and, you know, I know I mentioned footy tab. It just started, yeah. betting on football and all that. Yeah. And uh, came the, uh, the, the telephones went right well, the next day. Bullfrog <laughs> said, I'll, I'll make jokes of things when I get embarrassed. And that was a, that was a joke. 1994, you break your arm in your 299th game. You come back against South to play 300. Where and what number did you have on your back? You must remember. I think it was Conquer Oval. Yeah. And you were jersey number 55. Oh, of course. Three grades then. It was third grade, wasn't it? Yeah. So, we're at 55. I haven't got that jersey. You didn't keep it? No, I, well, I did have, no, I didn't. I might make one up. <laughs> I might make a collection and sell it, start selling them. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> you mentioned Peter Moore. Yeah. Uh, the following year after you won the grand final, you contemplated retirement. And Peter Moore actually did after a quarter of a century as the CEO at Canterbury. Can you tell us a little bit about the Bullfrog? Oh, he's a, he was a great man. He, um, geez, geez, we miss him. Our club misses him. Um, even Karen Folks has passed away as well, and Mari's passed away. Um, he just treated us special. You get up the club, you go to the Chinese, he'd say, boys, come on, I'll share you some feet. So we go up and have a three feet at Chinese. Um, I, I, I love Bullfrog and not always will. He just treated me different. I don't know if he treated me, some Steve Mortimer the same, but um, I just really got on well with him. And I'd, I'd, I'd muck around with him, I'd joke with him. Um, I'd take his Cigar uh, cigarettes away from him. He couldn't find them. Um, I played jokes with him, but uh, champion person, yeah. and uh, he made our club what it is. I had a bit of involvement with him. He was a player's man. Yeah, he was. He, he, he knew. He knew what, what to say, how to say it. Exactly. Yeah. After an incredible career, you did retire at the end of 1996, and and during your time, you played against a multitude of outstanding five eights. Who was your toughest opponent? Well, when you play against the best, there's, for me, there's two. Um, especially in the early 80s, there's Brett Kenny and there's Wally Norris. Um, these players bring the best out of you when you play the best. I think Wally is the best player I've seen, but I love playing against Brett Kenny because he brought the best out of me and he was a ball player. Uh, he was quick, he was elusive, very hard to tackle, he used to duck under everything um, and I used to love playing against Brett and I, only because I played against him longer. Oh, yeah. You know, Wally come in in 88 and left in 92. So I love playing with people for a long era. Upon retirement, you, you were still around the club. You actually coached the reserve grade to a, a grand final victory in 98. And I guess that success helped you get the West Tigers job 2001-2002. It looked like a couple of tough years. How difficult yeah. was it? And I loved, I loved coaching at the time. Um, was I ready for it? Probably not. I should have hung on to reserve grade at Canterbury, Canterbury until folks had retired and maybe got a job then. Um, I wasn't West, ready for the West Tigers at all. Um, I thought every club was the same. They're not. Um, I could trust people at Canterbury or at the West Tigers. I had my problems um, with certain people, staff and players. Um, but I stood on me, me haunches and I asked players to play reserve grade and things like that, and probably I shouldn't have done that. Um, but I made the decision, I was, I was a coach, live or die by the sword, and see you later. <laughs> well, you went back as a director to the Canterbury Club, yeah. and, you, and you've had that close relationship uh, ever since. And, and, and just finally, <clears throat> this Friday night, you know, my Eels and your dogs of the 80s had an, a tremendous rivalry. 
when these two sides come together again like they will on Friday night, how do you feel when the clubs meet? We did have a rivalry, Pete, but we had a, a close bond together. Of course, we played Origin together and things like that, and we, we respected each other. Um, this will be a tough game. You, you smacked our backsides in the first first round a couple, couple of weeks ago. Um, this is going to be a tough game. For me, this will depend if we make, if the Bulldogs make the semis or not. That's what I think. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not playing that well. We, we scraped through against the Gold Coast. Um, these blokes need to get together and start fighting for the club. All right. Well, thanks for coming in tonight. Always good to see you. And I look forward to seeing you on Friday night. Thanks, Pete. May the better team win. I'll just say good luck. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Thanks, Mark.